The worst wildfires in recent history in Hawaii began on August 8, 2023, especially on the island of Maui. On August 15, 99 individuals had not been officially pronounced dead, hundreds were still missing, and survivors were preparing for the worst. The fire's origins and the amount of local government failure are both shocking. The cars with full gas tanks that reached the fire, they were exploded. But there's a lot more to this story, from land buyers like billionaires and investors to shady characters aiming to turn Maui into the first smart city in the world. How did we get here? What's happening? And what can we learn? Let's resolve this. Around Maui, officials called the first fire complaints on August 8 at 6.37 a.m. on megaphones. Police were circling areas and urging residents to leave. They also utilized neighboring hydrants to put out fires. But the early calls for evacuation were well received due to Hawaii's recent quadrupling in wildfires. For instance, brush fires started in August 2018 when Hurricane Lane got closer to Maui. Over 2,000 acres were burned and many people were forced to leave their homes. Again in 2019, massive flames tore over Maui, destroying dry brush and almost 25,000 acres of old sugar cane fields as Hawaiian soil reached record high temperatures. So how did regional authorities react? They released this comprehensive emergency management plan for Hawaii in February 2022. Here they've ranked the likelihood that several natural disasters might impact Hawaii. Where did wildfires stand then? They rank pretty low, and their poor rating for the danger and impact on individuals is startling. That seems a little crazy. A lot has to be unpacked. There are three active fires at the moment. The West Maui and South Maui each set a county on fire. Most of the destruction was caused by the West Maui fire, which also burnt Lahaina. Since 1918, when 453 people perished in Minnesota's Cloquet fire, 99 fatalities have been recorded as of Monday, August 14. This is a large number of deaths in an American wildfire. Over 5,200 people are included in a crowdsourced database that is going around on social media, yet 1130 of them are still labeled as being unlocated. Tragically, the number of fatalities is sure to rise. Because returning outside isn't even entirely safe. 86% of the at least two, two zero zero, buildings destroyed in the fire were homes. Josh Green, the governor of Hawaii, said that FEMA Administrator Dean Criswell indicated that more cadaver dogs were headed to Lahaina, but that the search was difficult and would take time at a White House meeting on Monday. According to local officials' records, just 3% of their systematic searches resulted in 99 recorded fatalities. Thus, those figures will increase. According to Adam Weintraub, a Hawaii Emergency Management Agency spokeswoman, the state's renowned integrated 310 outdoor siren warning system, the biggest in the world with over 400 alarms, was not activated during the flames. There are 80 outdoor sirens on Maui, the second largest island in the Hawaiian archipelago. To warn locals of tsunamis and other natural calamities, they did nothing except watch as others ran for their lives. According to records and an interview with Adam Weintraub, nobody in this state or the county tried to activate the sirens. Even though Maui's warning indicators were not triggered, most electricity and cell coverage had already been down, which confined emergency contacts with locals to broadcasters and mobile phones. Most people weren't equipped to foresee how rapidly flames may spread. Another factor that was taken into account is that more than 400,000 hectares of the island are covered with invasive, fire-prone grasses. We need to conduct some historical study to assist the flames as they develop their understanding of the current state of affairs in Hawaii. After approximately a century, the Dole Fruit Firm discontinued cultivating pineapples in Hawaii in 2009. Second, Alexandra and Baldwin Incorporated dedicated 2016 to closing its 140-year-old sugarcane plantation. Remember the flames that broke out in 2019 on abandoned ancient sugarcane estates? Thirdly, when ranchers brought cattle to Hawaii, they began to cultivate grass to feed them, mostly guinea grass from all across Africa. And as was already established, this invasive grass species has wholly taken over the island, covering hundreds of thousands of hectares.
This grass may grow up to six inches daily, and once the dry season arrives, it dries up and completely turns into fire fuel. This ties into one of the conspiracy theories I've read online, according to which the whole situation is a land grab by affluent investors and billionaires to acquire land at a discount. A BBC story that did an excellent job of showing some of this was fascinating. I detest names like Direct Energy Weapon Post, which is what this one is. I was cautioned not to share this video since it is so ridiculously false that a transformer is exploding in Chile. That does occur occasionally. It is not an energy direct weapon. Another question that has been asked on social media is, if the flames in Hawaii were natural, is this correct? You can never tell if something has been photoshopped, but that is precisely what happens in this situation. And this one is easy. It is a light pillar, an optical phantasm created on a chilly day by reflections of ice crystals. But what occurs when glare and cameras are present is fascinating. If this was natural, how come the trees still stand, yet the building is destroyed? As you can see, the trees have also suffered significant damage. There could be a tree standing now and then. However, most of them have been completely leveled. In all of those instances, the Lahaina State uploaded a photo of a church that had burned down, and somebody had placed something that looked like a strike of light to suggest that it was a direct energy weapon or something. And that was just outright untrue. It was a Photoshop effect that had been fabricated. Hawaii needed more readiness. Lahaina is located here. Just one route leads in and out of the city. If something were to occur along these lines, prevent it. All residents in these areas would need access to an escape route. Hawaii is woefully unprepared for the possibility of a fire. And as we noted with Hurricane Lane in 2018, hurricanes stoking solid winds can have devastating effects. The Hawaii Energy Company should also bear some of the blame, and they already do because you must start planning to deliver these lines at any time. Overhead electrical cables are visible. That represents the risk of failure, correct? Because if solid winds or another type of natural calamity strikes, added to everything else will be downed power lines. In the case of the Hawaiian state government, if we don't bury electrical lines, if we don't correctly equip and be prepared, and if we don't make sure that alarm systems function, people anticipate that siren to sound warning them to take action, and if it doesn't, they assume the fire is contained, and there is no need to respond and worry. If you have a siren and don't utilize it, you do enormous harm and a disservice. However, if you have sirens but don't utilize them, horrible things may occur, and such events may never happen again. They require independent power systems for use outside the grid. Solar powered, how would they do it? That way, they can have electricity even if the grid goes down. However, such systems must function, which is a significant issue. There is still discussion because you cannot make this up. The incident commander for the Las Vegas shooting, which was likewise clouded by conspiracies, was the same Maui police chief, John Palatier. You can't make this up when someone who committed one of the most notoriously horrific killings in American history is now in Maui. See whether we need to determine ways to get better in the future. Fire will soon become one of the most common natural disasters. Thus, we must take immediate action. We will see more severe storms due to the general warming of the oceans. The battery, Hurricane Dora, went about 10,000 miles, which is unusual for our area. Are you the only ones who are affected by this? We can't quit thinking about this tragedy. It's consumed our thoughts. We made a financial contribution to the King's Cathedral on Maui, which is on the ground and performing a lot of excellent work there. Please like and share this video of Casual Grip. Thank you so much for your kind comments. See you in the following excellent video.